you. Thank you so much. You are so kind. Stay standing for a quick moment, and let's really give our greatest praise to Jesus. No golf clap in the house. Let's give it up for Jesus. Come on, baby. Oh, my, how he loves you. The glorious Son of God, risen with healing in his wings, overshadowing Harvest Time Church today. Wow. Wowzies. Okay. You can have a seat if you can, and I may have you up and down a few times for some cardio workout this morning. Good to see you all. and It's such a, a treat to be back with you, Pastor Glenn and Denise and Nick and, and all of the team and staff. Isn't the worship just amazing? I mean, Wow. You're really blessed, guys, more than you realize. And before you leave today, I think you're going to start to realize even more how blessed you are. But this is my trophy wife. And uh, we've been joyfully married for 42 years. Well, good morning. We're always glad when we get to come back here because we just feel like we're here with family. We really love you guys. And we're royally treated, so thank you so much for your wonderful hospitality. But before I give the mic over to my husband, I just love to read this blessing from the Psalms over churches, and especially this church. We read it last hour, so I don't want to miss out on reading it over you now. It's uh, Psalm 20, and it's from the Passion Translation, and there are no more Psalms out there, so you won't be able to get it unless you go on the website. But I do want to read this and bless you this morning so you could even close your eyes and just soak in what the Lord is saying over you today in your day of danger may the Lord answer and deliver you may the name of the God of grace set you safely on high may supernatural help be sent from his sanctuary may he support you from Zion's fortress May he remember every gift you have given him and celebrate every sacrifice of love you have shown him. May God give you every desire of your heart and carry out your every plan as you go to battle. When you succeed, we will celebrate and shout for joy. Flags will fly when victory is yours. Yes, God will answer your prayers and we will praise him. Thank you, Lord. Give him a clap offering. He is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, baby. Oh, wow. This is going to be good. I think I know what's coming. I, I'm not for sure, but I think it's going to be good. Now, if you see me stop and take notes, it's really getting good, okay? But uh, God is, is just really moving in the nations today in a spectacular way. And I, I hope you'll keep your eyes focused on what's true, pure, lovely, virtuous, praiseworthy, excellent in his eyes. Because regardless of your mood swing, God is ruling. He's really happy. And he's doing a great job. He's the best dad ever. And he loves his kids. And he's filling his kids with joy. So take a drink today of the joy of the Lord. Receive it into your heart. You really need this. I hate to tell you, but some of you look like you could make a good cover page to the book of Lamentations. You've been through it. I know life is hard. It's rough out there. But you know what? Our life is hidden with Christ in God. The true life and the true experience we have spiritually we do not receive our jollies on this planet, on this world alone. Of course we love our families. Of course we cherish those that we love. And we relate uh, in the body of Christ where he places us. And there are sweet joys in this life that no one will take from us. But our ultimate joy is in the Lord. It's in the experience of knowing him and loving him and watching him break through in our lives. It's been a, a fantastic uh, to travel to the nations and, and throughout the United States. Uh, as you mentioned, as the uh, U.S. Director for HIM, we have 
uh, just thousands of churches that have welcomed us and and uh, not I haven't been into every one of them obviously but but uh, we we are logging about 300,000 miles with Delta this year they really know you know when you start recognizing the flight attendants you know you've been on a lot of airplanes I mean, it's just, uh, we're one of their top tier flyers, and uh, thank God for upgrades, hallelujah. And uh, we, uh, we just take joy in going to the nations with this sweet message that I'm going to bring to you today. The Bible has a lot of topics. There's a lot of themes you could talk about. Of course, there is a need for holiness, repentance, the brokenness of our heart before Him. But I'm going to give you a, a, a blessing today. I'm going to speak about the riches that God has given to us in Christ. Can you handle that? Why don't you say these words like you mean it? I'm richer than I think. Oh, it's going to get good. You are richer than you think, my friend. You probably don't know this name, but uh, it's the name of a woman by the name of Hetty Green. Hetty Green lived on the West Coast, and she will go down in U.S. history uh, by far as the most penny-pinching, miserly woman ever to be in our nation. This chick had, uh, at her final passing, at her uh, estate, as they, uh, you know, counted all of her estate, money she had hidden, stuffed here and there, she was worth well over $100 million in 1916. That would be approaching $1 billion today. But let me tell you about Hetty. She was so money conscious. She refused to heat up water to cook her oatmeal in the morning because it would cost to heat the water. So she would eat cold oatmeal uncooked every day. When her son had a severe leg injury, she refused to take him to the hospital and instead looked for a free clinic. And her search delayed the, the healing of her son's leg so much that they ended up having to amputate her own son's leg. You know what? That's not the way to use your resources. And I believe that many Christians today are living beneath the standard of living that we have in the kingdom of God. So I'm not going to talk about your dollars and your bank account. I'm going to talk about spiritual riches today. Is that all right? You know, that just triggered a thought. I remember I was translating uh, Luke. I may have shared this. I can't remember if I've shared this before, and I'm getting old, so you have to forgive both. But I remember translating, now that I'm 40, I translated Luke, and I think there's a few copies of Luke still out there in the back to the lovers of God. But I got to the passage where it said, if you're not faithful with another man's riches... How could I give you the true riches of heaven? My cell phone rings. It's a phone call. And somebody gave us, at that moment, a million dollars. This is a true story. They gave us a million dollars, designated for one of the ministries that were under us. There was a, we had a, a, uh, a, I would, if you knew the name, if I were to give you the name, you would be shocked, okay? The ministry that is part of our apostolic network, and that we were, uh, we were given this million dollars to give to them. In other words, they were bringing it through us to them as a gift. But because they did their due diligence, they found with the IRS that we had a group exemption, we had a, a status with the IRS that that ministry did not have, so therefore they made the check out to us. Isn't that amazing? How much of that do you think I kept? I'm telling you, the Lord will test you with revelation. He'll test you with the riches that He gives you. And, of course, we gave all of that and paid for the wire fee, whatever that came to. And, and uh, I asked the Lord if I could add another hundred grand to it. I couldn't quite do that, but maybe someday. However, I want you to know that I'm going to give you today the key to the treasure chest of eternity. And I've asked the ushers to lock all the doors and not let anyone out until you receive and respond and put a smile back into your step, put some zippity in your doodah, and, and get out of this spiritual slum mentality. Get out of the spiritual slum mentality that you can't heat up water to cook your oatmeal. I can't believe God could heal my daughter or bring my son back home or touch my husband or help my wife or give me a promotion or move my life further into my destiny. You see, we're living beneath heaven's standard of living. Thankfully, God has given us a book in the Bible that reveals the riches of eternity. If I were God for a day, 
you know, uh, if I were God for a day, I would command everybody to memorize the book of Ephesians. Thou shalt memorize. Bing. You should memorize the book of Ephesians. It is so awesome and so powerful. I memorized it 40 years ago, and I still draw from its well. I go back continually and receive from the revelation of this great book. I'm so thankful now to be able to translate it into this new uh, dynamic equivalent translation called the Passion Translation. And I, we finished that, and sadly, there, the, the other guys were... Uh, greedy and bought all of them and there's none left you can go online and get it for yourself I hope you will Proverbs will be out very shortly within a matter of days uh, but if you're wise enough you, then you don't need to read it you don't need to get the book of Proverbs if you're already a wise guy you got it made but I need it I gotta read Proverbs consistently in my life to have the wisdom of God well let's focus on the book of Ephesians real quick uh, the treasure chest of the Bible is this book, and I'd encourage you to turn in your Bible to Ephesians, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Ephesians, right in there. Find Ephesians somewhere between third queens, and uh, it's in there. I'm teasing you. I'm having fun. Uh, Ephesians is the bank of the believer. It is the spiritual checkbook that no matter how big of check spiritually you draw from, you write, you 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 uh, cash these checks, you're not going to diminish the account whatsoever. Isn't that amazing? You know, here on earth, our riches diminish, they fade away. But in the eternal realm, you, it's out of the glorious treasure chest of His riches, according to His riches of glory that He blesses us. So there's no diminishing of, you know, when He gives you a blessing, He doesn't run out for me. I can get I can get some too, even though he's really blessed you, because he's just full. Well, Ephesians can easily be divided in half. The first three chapters are so important, they give us the resources we have in Christ to be rich beyond measure. We're blessed beyond the curse. We are filled to overflowing. Our bucket of bliss is running over, bro. We are completely saturated filled with the blessings of God. I have to say it to you straight, man. He can't bless you any more than he already has, or it would threaten the Trinity. You have been one with the three in one. You're united with Christ, and now all of the resources and treasures of eternity have been deposited into your personal account. You are complete and filled. And we call this teaching, we call it our position. Our position in Christ is perfect. It can never change. It can never be diminished. We are fully, completely, totally His. Isn't it wonderful? Everybody say, I'm complete in Christ, and I'm richer than I think. And the last three chapters of Ephesians speak of our position here on earth. And of course, we need to stay clean. We need to be clean in our conscience. Our lives need to be free from sin. But until we understand the riches we have in Christ, if you cut off the first three chapters of Ephesians, all you have is religious duty. And I'll tell you what leads men to repentance. It's the goodness of God. It's the kind kiss of heaven. When we deserve a lecture and we get a kiss, it, it wrecks us. There's something alluring about a prodigal father that would love the unrighteous and the self-righteous with the same love. And as we're drawn into his heart and we realize that our generous Papa has blessed us beyond anything in our wildest dreams, then we begin to say, well, how can I live in darkness? Then? How can I flirt with sin? How can I get as close as I want to to what's evil and dark when I've been blessed? I've been, I've been cherished and loved, robed, throned, enthroned and crowned. I've been given eternity as a gift. More than that, I have the Son of God within me. And as I let him live his life out through me, as he branches out through me, then I bear fruit as a fruitful expression of his life. But I'm, belie I'm believing for you today that the revelation of what you possess in Christ will unlock your heart to go further, deeper, and higher into the glorious love of God. So the first three chapters are position in Christ. The last three chapters, how we walk it out. Another way to say it, all the riches you have, chapters 1 to 3. Now go and spend it, chapters 4 to 6. God doesn't just give you riches to like, uh, you know, tickle your brain. He gives you all of this wealth so you'll go spend it. 
Come on, man, you can heat up water for your oatmeal, baby. You, you don't have to eat cold oatmeal. Don't live in the, a spiritual slum when God has granted you the access to the resources and riches of eternity. All the wisdom you need, He has. All the authority you need, He has. All the power over darkness, over every foe, every demonic prince that would try to come against you or your family. You have authority because of the blood of Jesus and the gift of God. Oh, I love Ephesians. Uh, you know, we're all thankful I'm not God, so that, that's really, really nice. You don't have to memorize it, but uh, I would suggest you read it. So the true spiritual wealth that empowers you for a life of miracle, success, and breakthrough is to know what you have and make it the key for living in the fullness of Christ. So I'm going to take the next few minutes of your uh, Sunday uh, afternoon here. I'm going to take some time to outline the catalog of the glorious riches and treasures you have in Christ. Sit back and enjoy this. Uh, I think you're going to like it. In Ephesians, we have uh, so many treasures that are given to us. Chapter 1, verse 7 speaks of the riches of His grace. God's grace is full and rich, and I'm thankful for a rich supply of grace because I draw from that account many times. I need it. You, you're really cool. You don't need all that. I need it. I'm a weak man. I need the grace of God to go through my life, to walk through the uh, difficulties of human existence. I need the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. So the riches of His grace empower us. Then chapter 3, verse 8 speaks of the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's so unsearchable, and he says, go search them out. But it's unsearchable, but go look for them. It's amazing. The unsearchable, that means it's limitless. You can just, listen, you can empty all the languages of every tribe and tongue of every people on the earth. You pour them all out to describe what God has given, and it still will come short to express in the languages of men to express the treasures you have been given in Christ. It will take your eternity to unravel and unwrap the continual replenished gift that He gives to you called life in Christ. My, you're blessed. Why would you think for a moment what you don't have? Well, I don't have this. I don't have that. I, I don't have money. I don't have, uh, I'm single and I want to I get married. Oh, yeah? You get married and you say, oh, my God, why did I do that? I think I kind of like being single. And you get married and say, well, when are we going to have kids? All right, you get your kids. You go, when am I going to get a babysitter? Where is there a good babysitter around here? And then it's like, well, when are they going to leave home, go to college? When are they going to leave? When am I going to be that empty nester? I may kind of like that idea for a second. Then they leave. And you just go, well, when, is, when are they going to call? Why is my cell phone not ringing? Why aren't they calling me every day and telling me, oh, Daddy, I love you? So amazing how we live in an other than place. We've got to live in this throbbing moment. Jesus was crucified between two thieves yesterday and tomorrow. They both rob you of the cross and the revelation of Christ today. One was pointing to yesterday. The other was pointing to tomorrow. Jesus is the throbbing one between the two, saying, this is my life. Take me now. I will be everything you need, not just yesterday, not just tomorrow. Right now, take me into your life. So Ephesians, furthermore, speaks of the riches of his glory. Chapter 3, verse 6. And since I mentioned glory, the word glory, I like that word. I remember when I was pastoring and we, uh, we had a large young adult population in our church and I got up and said, we're going to have a glory conference. And the young adults said, man, is that old fashioned? What, what do you mean a glory meeting? And they would come to me and say, Pastor, dude, you, you got to come up with something a little more hip than like glory. I said, all right, come up with something. I said, you go, you go think it over and come up with something. And they came back and said, we got just the thing, glory. I said, that's right. It's glory. G-L-O-R-Y. I love it. I'll take more. I'll take what you leave behind, what you leave in the chair here. I'm coming after the meeting. I'm going to get it. I want the riches of his glory. I want all of it. I want the hope of glory. I want the revelation of glory. I want the, the truth that brings glory into my heart. I want the Christ in me, that glorious one, to live him, to live through me like a, like a fish in an aquarium. I want to be a see-through. I just want it Jesus. Is that okay? All right. Well, 
The word glory eight times. The word grace 12 times. Don't you love that word? Inheritance. I like that. That's found four times in Ephesians. The word riches five times. The word full or fullness. You'll find it seven times woven throughout this great book. And the phrase that is most common in the book of Ephesians, more than any other book in the Bible, in Ephesians, it's the phrase, in Christ. Everybody say, I am in Christ. You are not in need. You are not in a mess. You are not in discouragement. You are not in depression. You are not in between. You are not in transition. That's one word I'd like to delete for a long time. Quit, I mean, transition. Dude, your transition needs to, you need to transition out of your transition, okay? <laughs> well, I'm in transition. Oh, the whole world is. You know, it, it's in Christ. In Christ alone, I stand complete. All other ground is sinking sand. In Christ alone. In Christ. How does it feel today to be wrapped into Jesus? You are enfolded into him like an ingredient into cookie dough. You are wrapped into Christ. What he is, you are. You have what he has. His identity. The, the born identity. Jason born identity. You got a newborn identity. You, you are born Again, you're born from above. You're born by the breath. You're born by the wind of the Spirit. You're born into this new realm where you're now in Christ. Every time God looks at you, He sees you in Christ. My, you look good in Jesus Christ. You really look good in Him. Don't ever look at yourself apart from Christ because God never does. He sees you always wrapped in the righteous robe, the garment of glory. We're lost in the folds of his garment. Isaiah saw that robe filling the temple. We're lost in that glory garment. We are enfolded into Christ. Our destiny is not to just have a really good retirement. Our destiny is to be like Christ, to be a lookalike, to be a partner, the equal counterpart, to be everything he is. We're going to blend into him even as he's blended into us. I am my beloved's and he is mine. Amen. To be in Christ are the two sweetest words you'll ever hear. To be in Christ delivers you from the discouragement, the anxiety, the pain of, God, when are you going to come through for me? You are in Christ, sweetheart. You're not going to be the first human being he's ever failed. Believe me, it looks bad on his resume. You're not going to be the first person on earth that he has failed. It won't happen, I promise you, because you're in Christ. He's going to treat you the way he treats his son. Well, he did, like, put him on a cross, but that's okay. It's going to happen to you, too. He perfects us through suffering, doesn't he? But it's in Christ to be wrapped into him. I, I know this is so astounding, and I may have to write it down if it comes out right. But I'm telling you, folks, everything you love about Jesus. Do you love him? Uh, you know, you, we, we'd be here a long time if we started that topic of why you love him. Tell me why you love him. I mean, he's so wonderful, isn't he? Everything you love about Jesus, that's who you're going to be. That's your destiny. It, it, the adoration of Jesus, the, the glory that we, we ascribe to him, that glory he now puts on us. Hey, did you know that God says in the Old Testament, I will not share my glory with another, right? I'll not give my glory. I'm not going to share my glory with another. And it's true, he won't. However, you're not another. You're one with him. You're one with him. And if you read John 17, you'll find the great high priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus. He prays and says, Father, give them the glory that you gave to me. I share with you the very glory that I have in the triune essence, in the glorious Trinity. I give you the glory of the Trinity. Oh, baby, this ruins your depression. Man, this is good. I give you the glory that I have from eternity. It's yours. <laughs> The peace, my peace I leave with you. And you could put every virtue of the human existence. You could put every character trait of Jesus in that. My joy I leave with you. My glory I leave with you. My authority I leave with you. My wisdom I leave with you. My peace, my, my kindness, my tenderness, my obedience to the Father, my willingness to be a sacrifice. I give all of me to you. I'm going to share me. Two are going to be one. For it's not good that the Son of Man be alone. And he's found a perfect match. A perfect, per how does it feel to be the perfect match for the Son of God? 
He went online, jharmony.com. He filled out the profile, and you popped up. You were the one. Like, oh, I, I like this one. And he, I, he messaged you. He IM'd you, you know, through the Word of God. He, he messaged you with the logos of heaven, and he says, come be mine forever. Swept me off my feet 42 years ago. I love this man. I'm telling you, another Jesus movement's going to come to New England. Not going to be about the slobbering preachers holding the microphone. It's going to be about you and him and the passion of your heart being uncorked, being released to pursue Jesus Christ fully. So the effervescent Christ is in you. Isn't that good? The one who rose from the dead. How does it feel to be in Christ? Come on, you can say it. I'm richer than I think. My, when you understand what you've been given, then you live in a different way. And this was Paul's mentality as he penned Ephesians and the other epistles as well. This pattern fits all of his letters. Did I tell you he was in prison when he wrote it? So Paul is saying, yes, I want you to walk worthy. Yes, I want you to love your wife, your husband, your children, and to be the best employee you can be as a representative of Jesus. As we get into chapter 5 and 6, 4, 5, and 6, he, he, he works it out. He helps us walk in our condition here on earth. But it's only after he kisses us with this mercy kiss. And when the people of God come out from underneath a religious spirit that, that puts a yoke of bondage on your shoulders with no power to do it. When we come out from underneath that and realize we have been given all authority, all power, every gift. You know, I like 1 Corinthians. The most messed up church in, in the entire New Testament era, by far, were the Corinthians. Uh, and 1 Corinthians, what do you think Paul would say to those lazy bums? What do you think he would say to them? Why, you wicked, you... You need to, like, turn or burn, shake or bake, cry or fry. You know how he started out 1 Corinthians? You don't lack any good thing in Christ. You come behind in no gift. God has blessed you, and he's filled you, and he's anointed you, and I greet you in the love of God. Grace, peace, blessings everywhere. And by the way, stop arguing with each other. Quit your divisions. He goes on, and he works it. But only after he expresses... It's a love sandwich, folks. You learn to eat the love sandwich. God puts one big slice of love there, and then he'll put the correction. He'll give you the word, man. It'll, you'll, you'll, you'll get a good spanking if you need it. Don't worry. And then, but then he kisses you all over again. And the way he wrote the seven churches in the book of Revelation, the letters he wrote to them must become the model of ministry of perfecting and equipping saints. Have you never read the Song of Songs? Woo! That's God's love for us. It's not a Dr. Ruth manual for dysfunctional, hung-up Christians in their marriages. It has nothing to do or little to do with sensuality. But it has everything to do with a spiritual journey into the romantic, passionate heart of God. You really need to have this love theology. You must be rooted and grounded in love so that Christ will dwell in your hearts by faith. There is an increasing need in this messed up culture of ours to be firmly established in the ways of God. And I'm telling you, the ways of God here is to bless you before you deserve it, to raise you up and seat you on high before you even know the way to get there. And the moment you came to know Jesus Christ, you know that weird time, you remember how weird you were back then? The, that day you came to Jesus Christ, you didn't know nothing. You couldn't even spell Holy Ghost. You had no concept of the truths, the deeper truths of the revelation of Christ and His cross and eternity. But you had a revelation of faith. You came to Christ. Let me tell you, the moment you accept Jesus Christ, He gives you everything. Heaven contains everything. He doesn't hold back one thing. Ephesians 1.3. Can't say it any better than God. Everything heaven contains... Everything heaven contains has already been lavished upon you in Christ as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because He sees us in Christ. This is why we praise Him with all of our hearts. Ephesians just 
it is like this endless poetic expression of God's passionate love that blesses, embraces, accepts, welcomes, fills, long before we deserve it, long before we even feel in the slightest way like we would deserve anything. He still is this extravagant prodigal father that will bless, bless, bless. It's in his nature to bless. You heard the story about Alexander the Great walking down the road. True story. And he saw a, a beggar, a homeless man, this begging man, destitute. Here's Alexander the Great, ruler of the world. He pulls out of a pouch and he takes a number of gold coins and puts it at the feet of this homeless beggar. And the man standing next to him, one of his attendants, one of his generals said, Sir, why would you give gold coins to a beggar? Copper coins would suit his needs. You could just give copper coins to him and it would suit his needs. He said copper coins would suit his needs, but gold coins suit my need to give. And you see, God doesn't give trash to his people. He doesn't give garbage or leftovers. He gives the finest. He gave his son. He gave the blood of his son, the sacred blood. Drops of liquid love poured down from that cross. We, we love the wounds of Calvary. We need to as Protestants, we need to cherish, again, the wounds, the wounding of the cross. He's given us every good thing, and He will withhold nothing from us in Christ. I'm saying it a thousand ways, folks, so that we understand you don't have to eat cold oatmeal anymore. Heat the water up. Spend the money. Take the spiritual resources, and now release it into your lifestyle. Live in your means, in that heavenly realm. Access everything heaven has given you. If you've been lavished with all blessings, why would you live as though you're a beggar, a poor blind beggar on the side of the road, hoping you make it through the week? When we have been robed, enthroned, and crowned with every spiritual gift, every blessing, we don't lack one good thing as a believer in Yeshua, Jesus Christ our Lord. Say it one more time. I'm richer than I think. You see, God in grace has lifted us up together. By the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, we have been exalted into the heavenly realm. Do you know that? Ephesians 2, 6, and there's other places, Colossians 1 to 5, 3, 1 to 5, and other places in the New Testament, those he justified, he also glorified. There are places in the scriptures that teach us that we have been exalted and raised up already. Your coronation has already happened. You are already robed, enthroned, and crowned as the lookalike partner to the Son of God. You are now a co-signer to the title deed of the universe as a joint heir of all things. You have inherited everything the Father can give you through Christ because you are in Him, because of His virtue. It bleeds into you, pun intended. It bleeds into you. You get everything He is, has, and contains. It's yours in Christ. How does it feel to be seated in the heavenly places? I mean, Kilimanjaro's awesome. I've, I'm, you tell Kevin when he comes back, bro, I went higher than he did. While you were gone, I got seated. In, I, I realize now I'm seated in the heavenly places. Kind of hard to breathe up there sometimes, but that's where I am. I like to look at it this way. I'm a bilocational pastor. I have bilocated. By the resurrection of Christ, the ascension of glory, He took me with Him, and He took you with Him too. We have been seated on high in the heavenly places. Keep looking down. Keep looking down and crush the enemies under your feet. The God of peace will make it happen. You see, we, have, we can subdue all things because we are enthroned with Christ at the right hand of God. Ro uh, Revelation 3.21, the overcomers have been granted to sit with Him on the place of glory. You're a prince and a princess. You're a royal, regal bride. You've been robed with His glory robe. You look just like Jesus. You get to wear God's clothes. It's called the armor of God. You look like God when you stand against the enemy. Every enemy, every demon, every foe against you and your family, you resemble God because you're wearing His clothes. It's the armor of God. His faith, His shield, His helmet, His sword. You have it all. My, you're scaring me. I wouldn't want to come against you. 
Uh, let's be friends. Uh, you're, you're, you're like mighty in God. You're the mighty ones who do his bidding. Psalm 29, you have authority because you're seated in that heavenly realm. Now when the church rises up, wholesale, when we all, the churches of Jesus on this earth, rise up and our condition matches our position, it's all over. We start doing the works of Jesus. We start healing every sick person that's within about a mile of where we are. We release the presence, the manifest presence. As we talked about Friday night, the fear of the Lord comes upon the region. All it takes is one to live in his condition the way we have in our position. If we will begin to walk and access and release these treasures of eternity, our lives will never be the same again. There's a man I want to talk to you about real quick before we close. His name's Peter Wadling. Peter's from Suffolk, England, and one day, on November 16th, 1992, he was uh, out on his farm, and he lost a hammer. He lost his hammer. So he called up his neighbor, and he said, hey, uh, you have one of those metal detectors. Bring over your metal detector, and let's see if we can find my lost hammer. Well, they searched uh, the ground and scanned the field where he lost it, and they discovered so much more than a hammer. What they uncovered by this metal detector was an ancient buried treasure that dated back to the Roman era in England. And they dug up, they kept digging up things, uh, it started with Roman coins, then golden jewelry, silver spoons. They actually discovered 15,000 individual items that had been buried in this huge chest that, that had disintegrated over the time span and the wealth that he found looking for a hammer he uncovered the greatest wealth buried treasure ever found in England's history before or since worth millions and multiple millions of dollars or pounds if you're from uh, uh, over there what he didn't know is what he already had he already had what he didn't know why would you pay for something you already have why would you try to strive to get what you've already been given? So you don't have to labor for anything except to rest. And the, the toil is the only, the only toil that is the sweet carrying of the yoke of Christ, the yoke of union that we learn of Him. We enroll in the seminary of divine meekness and we become one as one joined to the Lord. We live in the anointed one forever joined to Him. I'm so thankful to tell you. Thank you for listening to this. I'm so thankful to tell you today, you are richer than you think. Amen. Give him some praise today. Let's give him some praise. Come on, you're blessed. No more gloom. No more gloom. Isaiah 9 verse 1. No more gloom for the people of God. You're never going to be used of God with this gloom over you. Ever. Shake it off, bro. Shake this thing off. Because the glory of God is risen upon you. You need to operate in the internal glory of God. Ours is not the external glory of Moses. It's an internal glory of Christ within. Christ in heaven is not my hope of glory. Christ in me is the hope of glory. I've asked Jason Bourne and the worship team, Elizabeth, mother of John the Baptist, to do, to do a song. I really like this song. Jesus. One. You're richer than you think. Heat up the water for your oatmeal. Come on, you can do it.
true. Harvest time, come on up. Come and get the riches of heaven. Lift up your hands. My heart will sing. My heart will sing. 
up your hands lift up your voice give glory and honor to him come on give glory and honor and majesty to him lord dominion and power and strength belong to you lord dominion and power and strength belong to you lord dominion and power and strength belong to you lord lord yours is the scepter yours is the kingdom lord yours is the throne jesus Dominion belongs to you, Lord. You're the highest. Yeah, Lord. Come on, make a shout of praise. Come on, shout his name. Exalt the Lord. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, let's sing that part one more time. Everybody, turn your face to heaven. Lift up your hands to him and make this your declaration. There's no one else that's worthy of your praise today than Jesus. Come on. My heart will sing. so good. Amen. He's so good. Come on, just stand in his glory for one minute. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody needs to pray or prophesy. Just, just be in his presence for one moment. Come on. He's altogether lovely. Thank you, Father, for sending your best, for lavishing your love on us in the Son. Thank you, Father, that you've given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, and you've given Christ within us the hope of glory in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so good. He's so good to his people. Amen. What a word of grace. Aren't you so glad that the Lord sent Pastor Brian here to wreck your depression today? Aren't you so glad that your depression has been ruined? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to ask you if you wouldn't mind just returning to your seat really quick. There's one more.